Now, uh, we can also see. Uh, so this large scale is basically. This, this is what I was I was referring to in terms of the national sample national survey, sample survey. survey uh, yeah. results. Now, um, this is the fiftieth round. Huh? This is the fiftieth round, and uh, I want to highlight one important uh, factor here. This is nineteen ninety three. 1991, India uh, moved to this, you know, large-scale economic reforms. So, right. So we can say that these are the threshold of that reforms. The reform effect of reforms had just not started. Been, yeah, just had just not started. been percolated mm. kind of a thing. Here we we have for rural as well as this typical, you know, uh, consumption data for rural as so well as. So just for my understanding, when yeah. we do NSS, we will cover the entire population of India. Yeah, uh, entire population, uh, you know, samples, no. But the coverage is yes. Coverage is Re across representing entire population. Representing, the, but it samples. Yes. And what is the sampling? I mean, you will take smaller number. Huh? It is. It is basically stratified sampling, mm -hmm. and so you have uh, different strata, and from different strata, you find you can. What is the strata? Strata is income. Strata is in region. Strata is in income. Strata is in terms of occupation. Okay. And from there, you you get a. a you have to ensure that everything is covered. Yes. Yes. And typically, how many people would an NSS thing cover? Oh, that's that's huge lakhs. Of Ten lakhs observations. Yeah, but still, we it have depends on survey to survey. But we have hundred crore. I mean, in nineteen ninety three, we must have had hundred crore, right? Yeah, yeah. But uh, but it is it is it is supposed to be a, a good representative uh, uh, data on in generally on India's consumption because the kind of strata that are used is supposed to be very robust. Okay, it is. It will capture a typical. Concept. So for hundred crores, maybe few lakhs is enough. Huh? Ten yeah. lakhs, five lakhs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it uh, the the important thing is in terms of identifying the units in terms of the within the strata, how many units to be covered in a particular geographical region in a particular you know uh, income bracket, and then that is done in terms of both the rural and urban. And this is fidelity is good. I mean you. Uh, what is the error that you might get in such a sampling? Uh, b b see, um, what has happened over time is that as and when income increased of the population, um, we get some noise ah. because the consumption consumption behavior also changed. Mm. Earlier times, the data was very robust. Now, what has happened is that. Uh, Consumption has become very dynamic. Mm. So the kind of inferences that we could draw earlier and the kind of inferences that we can draw now, maybe there is a limitation. Because the choice set for the consumer itself has expanded, has expanded very much. Unlike uh, 80s or 90s. So what does it mean? Does that mean that we have to sample more or? We, we will have to. So no. So what, what we have done now is we have actually um, added what is known as um, uh, what we what we call as the uh, high frequency consumption data to this. Okay. Certain commodities are consumed uh, higher in terms of frequencies. I mean, repeated consumption kind of a thing. So we look at this, and then we look at that. Then perhaps we will be able to draw some inferences. Uh, otherwise, uh, because there is a structural change that has taken place in the economy. Uh, it is there is some kind of a bias. Is this why people say that big data, which is basically all this Amazon and other guys collecting all the consumption data of everybody, very important. Now, why? Because uh, there is there are two kinds of biases that could come here. One bias is the timing of the survey. Hmm. Suppose the survey in my village, the uh, the person. Came to uh, survey me uh, during the Wali time means my consumption will be automatically bumped. Mm. So you should take out that bias. The survey should be conducted uniformly across the country, mm. like you know census operations kind of a thing. Second thing with most of this kind of consumption data is what we call as a recall bias. Suppose you ask me what I have consumed in the last one month. Some of the things I will not be you not remember. I will not be able to recollect. So I will put some approximations. And then if you ask me what but did you today you will know. Yeah. So suppose you ask me what did you consume last three months, 
my return <laughs> bias will be even more correct correct that's true so what nss has done is that consumption in a day consumption in a week consumption in a month oh i see so to minimize see, this thing called bias bias yeah. uh. so uh, generally i would say that in india the statistical system is very robust in terms of this surveys and yeah we have a we have a very well established network for that okay so what is it saying 93 94 now in 93 94 we find that um let us take uh, one important thing cereals rural consumption is dominated by 24.2% of rural consumption expenditure is mm. for cereals mm. urban it is only 14 hmm what does it mean they are eating wheat they they are eating other items yeah they are eating sugar maybe <laughs> <laughs> huh? and and that is yeah that is getting substituted Yeah. we don't know the income difference no. between now there is there is one more anomaly which i want to highlight here ah. look at vegetables in rural 6% what vegetables here is only 5.5 we would have thought the other way around that the urban person might be having more vegetables true no yeah now uh, because it's more available there or? so so there is there is a there is a kind of a Price, they value it more. A, a price factor, and that is available, and they think that it is important to consume. Or uh, another important thing we need to keep in mind that there is also rural consumption is also a function of the habits that are formed. No, individual households. But you know, I mean, just look at this. Sir. Cereals is twenty four point two. Yeah. Then milk and milk products nine point five. Yeah. Vegetables six. Yeah. And other food twenty three point five. Yeah. So if you add up all this, it's quite substantial. Twenty four nine thirty three thirty nine. Yeah. Another twenty and sixty sixty odd percent in, in rural is just food, ah. Huh? In in terms of food consumption, is that right? I mean, yeah. that's how it is. Yeah. And here it is what fourteen percent, ten twenty four, twenty nine thirty, other food fifty. Yeah. Here also it's fifty five percent. Yeah. So so food Good consumption God. is 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 mm-hmm. very high. Yeah, I suspect it will come down. And now this is ninety three ninety four. No. No. It's, it's, it's yeah yeah. It's a. You become richer. <laughs> yeah yeah. Okay. Yeah, but the change here is other non-food expenditure in rural is very low, but uh, other non-food expenditure in urban. But ten percent more. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and and one one more interesting fact I want to bring out that is clothing and footwear is six point three here, but here it is only five point six. So the rural people are very keen in terms of spending on clothing, on clothing and footwear and all because that's a kind of. Uh, con- consumption which we call as satisfaction what you said right conspicuous yeah, conspicuous consumption and satisfaction out of that <laughs> celebration and all that you and said right all this is uh, is related to that fish yeah mm. now uh, this is something which 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 is over time um uh, comparisons of this that is remember cereals we had 24.2 in our earlier earlier slide no mm. By the time we come to 2011-12, it has halved 12. Oh, this is rural urban. This is rural, and urban was 14, 14 earlier. And we can say they are also same. Halved. So what we guessed basically. Yeah. But this cereals only total, total food we have to see. Yeah. Total but food. But food food total. Look at food total. That's also here. Uh, see, it is 63.2 earlier. Mm. That's mm. what we calculated. Now it has come down to 48.6. And here, from fifty-four, it has come down to thirty-eight. Now, this is up to two thousand eleven, twelve. That's a decade old. Again, ten years. Lot of things would have changed, no? And uh, yeah, and what uh, what was really uh, worrying at some point for us? So, when they do this calculation, this is average, is it? So, what they do is basically, uh, yeah, this is a, a typical. Rural average, yeah. Uh, not median, not anything. None of those statistics. This is no. We, we can. So this data is available, and we can use it any way we want. We can divide it into quantile, quantile, quantile wise comparison. You can do that. Yeah. This is yeah. all up to researchers to really you know, squeeze the data and you know, okay. get insights from. But that. this is mean. This is mean. This is mean. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So, so we find that you know, um, um, yeah. For example, uh, I'm I'm just picking out this egg, fish, and meat. Three point three is more or less the same. But urban, we find that 
it has it has come down basically. <laughs> now these are these either are because three, yeah either yeah. because as they, they probably consuming the same in terms of quantum amount. Yeah, but the maybe the price of prices are egg has not gone up that much. I don't know. Huh? Or yeah. Hmm. So uh, many factors go into this, right? Yeah, but it is there is also some kind of doubts from these data that uh, uh, you know nutritionists raise. Is there a kind of a protein problem that we are facing? Less protein, we are consuming. less protein are we consuming? More carbohydrates and uh, implications <laughs> of that for mm. future and things of that sort. So, so what what we want to really uh, drive here is that well uh, the the. A shift from food to non-food consumption is taking place. Mm. Yeah, mm. forty-eight to fifty-one, and within that there is a reallocation. Yeah, what kind uh, of reallocation? Within within food itself, there is a reallocation. Yeah, for example, cereals consumption has it's come gone down. down. Come yeah. down. Yeah, at the at the same time, we find that you know uh, the uh, beverages consumption has increased four point two to five point five point eight, mm. Mm. and uh, very. Uh, Edible oil consumption has come down. People have become slightly more conscious. I guess so. Of yeah, oil mm -hmm. or whatever. It Something is. like that. Yeah. yeah. So, <coughs> so the, the the idea is that we can actually draw. We can see that the services, miscellaneous goods and services, whatever that name is, and durable goods. Yeah. They both have gone up. Yeah. Yeah. So du people are consuming more services. Yeah, and durables are the typical consumer durables that white goods. And white goods. Day. Yeah. They're yeah. buying more white goods. Yeah. They're less food. More white goods and more services. Yeah. Was it like insurance or something? Yeah, all all this kind of you know. Uh, so I think that is consistent with an economy where incomes are growing, mm. because consumer. Cons so that is why we see a lot of reports saying that India is a booming market in terms of durables, and you mm. know entering mm. Indian market is very important and things of that sort. From this kind of you know bundles of consumption. That right. Right. <coughs> now. We can actually do. I was just telling you that we can do different kinds of analysis. Dicing and slicing of the yeah. data, yeah. Mm. And here, what we are doing is the average rural and urban monthly per capita consumption expenditure. Mm. Again, the same kind of a thing in terms of how different uh, commodities. What is a percentage? Yeah, and uh, this is only for 2011-12. But yeah, earlier we had a time series of that. And this, if we compare with the 1994, that was uh, that one was uh, percent. Uh, how much was that? That was percentage. Yeah. Previous that. Yeah. Whereas this is actual number. This is actual actual money spent. Then. Money spent. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is actual when we when we look at this is in rupee terms. Rupee terms. Yeah. So okay. Okay. So this is the, so this we are so using. You can see the, actually the tax for the urban is quite high. Yeah. Though percentage wise you can make out, right? Yes. But if you look at the stack, this guy is at 26, 27 thousand rupees, and this is at about fourteen thousand. So actually the urban guy is consuming much, more. much, much so, more. So here, here we can use this data to see um, how many times more is urban consumer consuming than the rural, rural. consumer, mm -hmm. especially item by item. Item by item we can get. So cereals and pulses that seems to be almost the same. Same actually, thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because how much can you eat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. milk and milk products, it's quite different actually. Yes. And similarly, this one, whatever this is, this clothing, I don't know what it is, any oil, I don't know what it is. Yeah. This yeah. thing, it's yeah. gone up quite a lot. Yeah. yeah. So, this is another uh, very interesting way of, you know, drawing inferences from the consumption data. Hmm. Third kind of an inference that I want to draw is, well, ultimately all of this can be related to uh, poverty. Mm -hmm. Because consumption is related to poverty. Hmm. Your per capita consumption, um, especially in the Indian context, when we define poverty in terms of calorific value, your uh, food consumption is extremely important. What we are seeing here is that uh, this is in terms of you know quintiles in terms of 20, 40, 60, 80, the um, uh, uh, per capita net state domestic product. NSDP is the net state domestic product. And here it is headcount ratio. Headcount ratio so, is nothing but when is a state means it's for one state, huh? No. No, this is for for um, all all states pooled average. Okay. Yeah. It is not uh, not for one one state uh, per se, but uh, an average for all states just to get an aggregate uh, picture over time. Um, headcount ratio is nothing but the percentage of of people who are below poverty line. I see. Headcount ratio, it's called. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. We find that, well, uh, it's, it's uh, nothing against common sense, but 
this income bracket mm. maximum poor yeah now so the range is between 20 and 60% are poor there yeah now there is another very very important kind of a, uh, of you can see it is it coming down it's coming down a little bit right yeah 2011 is the square boxes square are, boxes yeah are coming down like yeah. yeah so that is exactly the, the the point that are we able to push these people from here to here right if we are able to do that well then i think our uh, policies are having some kind of an impact in terms of reducing poverty that is a kind of oh, so each of these is one state is it i think this is each is state one state yeah this is um, because 2011 several dots are there yeah. so presumably these are the different states different states where you know average uh, the average uh, okay of 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 this uh, quintiles or what oh, yeah. okay i yeah. see i understand yeah so basically okay so we have one state which has gone over here really yeah. far away whoever yeah. that is somebody is on then there are some other states are doing very well but then a lot of states are clustered around clustered here. there yeah. yeah okay so this is another example of an inference which we can draw yeah. using this consumption data ah. that is we can actually relate to poverty and the quality of life quality of life as in the in this case you have taken head count ratio the, we, as the representation of how many people have enjoying a good quality of life yeah right yeah. the lower the head count ratio Uh, more number of people are enjoying a better quality, better quality of, life. of life because you are able to consume more and you know we are relating consumption to living standards there right so where does this take us this takes us to our earlier uh, starting point that is if we have to develop a theory of cons- consumption and consumer behavior then uh, we need to uh, understand the concept of utility a little more because when we look at the yeah i'll go back uh, go back in a minute when we look at the the uh, consumption basket, basket the decision that this consumer is making is in terms of what percentage i should spend for different things different things yeah 